as you know, the pandemic has stopped us from gathering, but a lot of us still crave connection. As fitness professionals, we can create virtual well being connections for our fitness community. This webinar will inspire you to get started or to try new methods of engaging with people online. Each presenter will take 10 to 15 minutes to describe what's worked for them with the specific populations that they serve. Afterwards, we'll have about 10 minutes for any questions that come on in. So please be sure to continue to engage in the chat box. Now I'm delighted to introduce our presenters. We have Tiffany Moffitt, who is an FIS pro trainer from Kelowna, BC. She's going to share how she's worked with an actively aging group during COVID. We also have Alison Coombs, who is a PTS and FIS certified coach from Whitby, Ontario. She specializes in fitness, nutrition, and mindset strategies for mothers. She's a pro with Facebook groups, virtual classes, and events that bring moms together. Last but not least, we have Fiona Vanderwerf, who teaches most of our Camper Pro certifications, PTS, FMA, FIS, and HWL. She also opened up a boutique gym in her community of Bracebridge, Ontario during the pandemic. Fiona is going to share what she's done to pivot her business online while maintaining income. And with that, I'll pass it over to Tiffany to start. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to speak to you about online, online activities that can enhance health and stress resiliency within the active aging community. Um, we know that the active aging population is at risk due to COVID and that they typically are, are more inactive than our younger population and in, in turn more prone to decline in physical and mental health. We also know that even before the COVID pandemic that physical activity was one of the most important public health challenges um, facing older adults globally. So with the current disruption to the usual routines and the public and social um, health measures that have been instituted, physical and mental health in older adults is severely being impacted. Uh, there's one study that came out of Europe uh, showing that there's been a 53% decline in physical activity levels in older adults age 70 and older. And that's due to social isolation and public health and social measures that have been instituted. So we want to ask, where do we come in as um, health professionals and fitness professionals, and what are some well-being interventions that we can offer? So um, I'm just going to share that next to you. Until recently, I was the health and fitness coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Center, and uh, I was had the good fortune to work on a study with UBC called the SCOPE study, and the SCOPE study stands for Seniors COVID-19 pandemic exercise trial. This trial was created for seniors age 65 plus with no serious uh, medical conditions. And the study was led by Mark Beauchamp, um, the professor at, of exercise and health psychology at UBC. The goal was to assess whether exercising with other older adults as part of a socially connected, but obviously physically distanced format would impact their, uh, their well-being, both their mental and their physical well-being. And then the, the goal of the study was also just to assess what types of activity programs are the best to connect with these um, older adults and active agers. Um, and then and more importantly too, and how can we get these programs off the ground as soon as possible? So the study was um, a 12 week study. Um, interestingly, what would normally take about 10 months to put together, Mark Boshab and his team of researchers put together in literally one month. So it was fantastic, we got it off the ground running. Um, we had 300 participants in the study across Canada with three cohorts. So what the cohorts are, is you familiar with studies, though it's usually a control group, that was about 100 people, an individual study, which was like an on-demand format, so people could access pre-recorded classes. And more importantly, I'm gonna to talk to you about the group trial. The group trial was amazing in that the participants in that trial, which was again about 100 people, were able to participate in daily fitness classes. And these classes were run seven days a week for um, 12 weeks from June to September. And the class came on every day from nine to noon. So depending on what time zone people were in, they would join um, PSD time or West Coast time uh, at 9 a.m. The class was followed with what was called a coffee chat or tea time and it enabled people to really come in and connect. And that, that lasted for 
usually half an hour, but often 15 minutes, people were in a hurry and often went over time too, because people were really enjoying that. And in fact, a lot of the participants in our trial were saying that that was for them sometimes the only opportunity in their day to actually connect with people um, or have something that was actually scheduled in their day too. Um, so here I'm just sharing a slide with you of um, early days of our trial, which was a lot of fun. We have two of our uh, instructors here, Dal and Barry. And as you can see, we started off our program teaching with um, what was an iPad on the tripod there. And you can see Barry's wearing a headset. So we used the exterior sound um, and microphone, which really didn't work that well. <laughs> so we pivoted really quickly to um, using a laptop and Zoom call format where we shared our audio, which was a lot more successful. Um, so my role in the program as a coordinator at West Vancouver Community Centre was to be on the ground every day. So I, I was one of seven instructors, but we had six other ones. And when I wasn't teaching, I was helping with tech. And so I was there every day when most days, except for I was allowed to have the occasional day off and had an assistant help me. <laughs> um, but I had to, a really amazing chance to see firsthand how much impact the program had on creating community for the participants in the study. Now, the program was so popular that we ended up extending it in the fall for eight weeks. Of course, when we started this in June, we didn't know how long the pandemic would be in place and how long um, these active agers would need our services and our classes and had this opportunity to connect. And sure enough, we hit um, the fall of September was the end, early September was the end of the official trial. We hit September and went, no, this, <laughs> we need to keep going with this. <laughs> this is really um, something that our community needs. So we extended it the eight weeks and that took us to Christmas. And then um, currently the West Vancouver Community Center has taken on the program as part of their fitness offerings. And it's now being offered as a, a low cost program, three days a week and uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. So um, we're happy that we were able to extend that trial. Now I'm in Kelowna now, so I'm not um, there on the ground anymore, but was there until December, which was fantastic. And, um, with some, in talking about some of the, the breakout sessions that we did or the coffee chats, there was one example that I just wanted to share with you quickly of two women who connected in our coffee chat. Both of them had lost their husbands, one in October and one in January. And um, it was a particularly difficult time for them. And they were in the same breakout room together and ended up connecting and sharing their stories and sharing community. Um, so as you can see, this sharing of community, you may have experienced yourself um, as well with, with Zoom calls and you know how amazing that can feel and, and coming together and, and that power of connection. Uh, so the top left of the screen, you can see everybody in the, in the breakout chat. And one thing to highlight is that we all had the same t-shirt. So we call it the SCOPE, Seniors um, COVID Pandemic Trial t-shirt. Um, it's black t-shirt with a white logo. The instructors wore the t-shirt and the participants were mailed out a shirt. And that was a way to try and make people feel like they were part of a community. Um, they also received a TheraBand, which was a really easy thing to, to put in the mail and send to them. Mm -hmm. And uses as an added tool uh, in, in formatting the program and the exercises and giving the instructors a little bit of variety. Um, and then within the call or the coffee chat, we did smaller breakout rooms. We also, as you can see from the bottom right screen, um, we did a theme class here and there, like a Christmas class, and that was amazing. And with our virtual power of virtual now, which was very cool for the Christmas class. Um, at that point, I was in Kelowna. I'm in the bottom teeny square there. And I did the stretch and the instructors at West Van did the cardio and strength portions. So we were able to deliver a class from two different cities. Um, one thing that's really interesting about this trial that I want to highlight is that in 2015, the same professor, Mark Beauchamp at UBC, did a trial called the GOAL trial. It's a group-based physical activity for older adults program. And one of the key findings of that study was the, that participants in the study were significantly more motivated by being led by other older adult instructors. So we, we took that information from the previous trial that Mark had done, and we made sure that our current instructors in the, in the um, SCOPE trial were seniors teaching seniors. They were relatable. Um, they were able to connect really well with their clientele and um, it would just seem that much more motivating for participants in the class. 
So at this point, we don't have any official results of the study, unfortunately, that I can't share with you. And I'm sharing my anecdotal experience because, as I said, I was on the ground every day, and that was fantastic. But I do have a, just a quick share for you of one of the women in the study named Mimi Dent um, shared that this experience of being part of this trial and having access to fitness every day brought her back on track to commit to her well-being and her cardio and her strength and that she also found amazing community of support and as we just mentioned you know we, we are not alone in this um, and having these virtual opportunities and this power connection makes us feel like we are are connected and we have the support that we need um, and then quickly just one other um, feedback was this was from the instructor's point of view and and it's and it's interesting because we think that as instructors or trainers that we're doing this as a big piece for our clientele but a lot of it is we need to and we need that power of connection too so barry chapman uh, one of our leaders at west van said that uh, we became a community of new friends and we look forward to exercising together and sharing our lives and laughter after class. Um, that they found a new energy, a new attitude towards their respective circumstances. And um, he said he was positively motivated as well. So what does all that mean? Um, so what I'd love to hear in the chat is if you currently do work with seniors, yes or no, and um, would love to hear if you are currently working with active agers as part of your community. And feel free to just say yes in the chat or any other comments about that it would be amazing. Okay, so just to wrap up, um, I probably have about three more minutes. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to give you as a, an outcome of that experience and my work with the um, scope trial, just some suggestions and some tips that may be of value to you. So first of all, um, creating virtual sessions for your clientele. If you haven't already gone to a virtual platform, you still are very much needed as part of the fitness community. So if you are able to jump that hurdle and get the confidence to go virtually, Zoom is an amazing platform. So I'd recommend that. And that way you can coach your clientele, you can see them. Um, but there are other platforms too, like Facebook and Instagram Live. Um, there's a, um, a resource through CanFit Pro called Be an Online Group Fitness Star that is gonna be in, the, in your chat. So um, you can have a look at this free webinar in addition to this one. It'll give you some amazing tips from our pro trainers on how to get yourself online. Um, I mentioned the coffee chat or tea time. Make sure you try and include that, especially if you're doing Zoom format. And um, if you can do it with each class, great. But if that's a little onerous, maybe try just doing a weekly one, like for a half hour on a Friday. I know a friend in Toronto that's doing it that way. Create a Facebook group for um, people to interact with each other. And, um, and for you to also share nutrition tips, fitness tips, challenges, maybe mental health tips. And I'll talk a bit more about mental health in a moment. Um, so thinking of things, first come from a perspective, thinking of things that may be needed by your active aging community, and then use that as a launch pad for coming up with tools for them. So what is it, one of the challenges for active agers is eating healthy. So maybe offering a healthy uh, cooking session once a month or something, or put a recipe in your Facebook group. Um, another option is to create a challenge. So one of the challenges for seniors is they're not as active. So getting them to try and go outside and maybe taking a picture or a selfie <laughs> of them outside in nature and, um, and sharing it in your Facebook group. Um, opening the dialogue about mental health, that's so important. Um, this has been a really new sort of um, facet for me because I haven't really touched on that in my classes before. I've talked a lot about mental health um, and by no means do I claim to be an expert and we all obviously know our scope of practice, but um, you can still familiarize yourself with resources for your participants, open that dialogue, engage them and just saying maybe, um, hey, it's okay to not be okay or it's okay not to be productive all the time. Okay, um, so having those conversations and it is timely because Thursday uh, this week is the Bell Let's Talk Day. So I've gone online and we're gonna put that link for you in the chat for the bellletstalk.ca toolkit. There's a number of amazing tools that you can use and share with your clients on mental health resources. 
and then um, another idea is just to create a t-shirt like we did with the scope trial, mail it out to your participants, may need to include that in the cost of their classes, um, work it into the cost of your, your programming, maybe send them out a TheraBand that they can use for their, um, their classes and to give you and them a little bit more variety than just body weight. We're getting really creative on body weight exercises as fitness pros, aren't we? Because there's not a lot of tools we have to work with. So that might be just expand your options a wee bit. And um, uh, in terms of making things light and, and fun and laughter, hey, I know nobody here is probably going on a Hawaiian vacation, but you can do a virtual vacation. You can do a luau day or a theme day, a crazy hat day, and, um, and just make your classes fun. Uh, Barry Chapman, who's one of our lead instructors on the scope trial, always talks about fitness should be fun. And if, as much as we can bring that to our, our clientele, that the best, that's the best. Um, and then just lastly, um, one quote that I love from Albert Einstein is only a life lived in service to others is worth living. So we find um, real joy in giving to others or creating uh, joy for others, others in our community. So maybe as a group or your community in fitness that you plan a donation program. So if you're working with active agers or seniors, maybe collecting devices that are used from your community to give to seniors so that they can um, get on Zoom calls or use a social media to connect since they're in isolation. Or maybe start a food delivery program um, for, for active agers. And um, so if you can just write in the chat at this point, one thing that you plan to do this week to connect virtually with your active aging adults, that would be fantastic. Um, that's about my 15 minutes and I'm gonna pass it over to our next speaker. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Tiffany, that was wonderful. And I really, really like um, the coffee chat idea because I know a lot of the classes that I'm participating in, it's just, you know, your quick 30, 45 minutes and you're just in and out. And that's something I really miss about a live class, having that connection afterwards, talking about how hard it was or just how much fun we had and when are you coming next? Um, so that's a really, really great tip. So now I'll pass it on to Allison, who is going to talk more about her community with moms. Take it away, Allison. Hello, my name is Allison Coombs. I am a mom of three. I'm a CanFit Pro certified personal trainer and group fitness instructor. I also have continuing education in nutrition and pelvic health. So in my business, I help moms to lose weight and obtain optimal pelvic floor through fitness, nutrition, and mindset. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so who here watching is either a mom or works with moms? Type yes in the chat if you are in any of those categories. So I'll, I just want to see uh, who's here with me today. Awesome. Oh, the chat lit up. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So being a mom myself and working with other moms, we are always looking to connect with other like-minded moms and families for that shared sense of community. We're looking for that modern day village where everybody supports everybody. Uh, because I hold the idea of the village so highly in my heart, community building has always been a very important part of my own identity. Uh, throughout the span of my business, I've always had community building elements woven into my personal brand. All right, so let's take a look at some pre-COVID uh, events. So in the pre-COVID days, <laughs> I used to host uh, free community events such as a dinner club as well as like picnics in the park and also a paid community events as well, such as uh, indoor postnatal fitness classes, stroller fitness classes and educational wor workshops such as the Mindful Mama workshop. So whether events were free or paid, um, wellness of mind, body and spirit uh, was always at the center of my programming. Um, I'm always also intentional about offering an atmosphere where moms feel safe, heard, and accepted. So although COVID has changed the way that we gather, I assure you that we as Skip Pros can still provide, provide a great virtual community for moms and their families where they can move their bodies, feed their minds, feel safe, and flourish. I will show you how I do this through Zoom classes, a community Facebook groups, and group challenges. All right, but why? Let's... Let's look at why moms need virtual fitness and virtual wellness more than ever. So moms and their families are more isolated than ever before due to COVID-19. Um, no matter if moms are working in or out of the home, they're wearing so many different hats. We are wearing so many hats. Um, now that they're doing all the important things that they have to do, they're doing these things in isolation. They're not doing these things with their physical village anymore. And that isolation is hard. 
you know, moms are feeling the stress of isolation, loneliness, work stress, their kids' work, school stress, relationship stress, all kinds of stress. <laughs> all right, can you relate to this in your own life? Type yes if you have felt stress at any point during COVID. Let me see the, all right, so I see lots of people <laughs> are feeling that stress. Okay, we have all probably been there at some point during the past year. When I read through the posts and many online spaces, I see how this uh, chronic stress is taking a toll on moms. We as Fit Pros can help to give moms a space where they can manage their stress, combat isolation by providing high quality programming with authentic connection and community at the center. According to the book, The Hormone Cure, Professor Shelley Taylor says that women who feel stressed out tend to lean on their peers for support as a, their primary coping mechanism. She refers to this as tend and befriend. She said that this tend and befriend seems to be one of the primary coping mechanisms of women dealing with stress. Women seek out other women to troubleshoot things with that they're struggling with in their lives. So that could be work, kids, anything else. Uh, she says that when women can leverage the love hormone oxytocin, they can leverage this hormone when they connect with other stress-reducing, protective females. So if you take a look at this slide, for example, uh, you'll see that we are tending and befriending. Um, you know, I'm getting taken care of by my friend that's feeding me here. These moms are troubleshooting and ideas with each other as they're going for a walk. So um, the power of community is so important to understand. And we as Fit Pros, we have an amazing opportunity and the right set of tools to really impact mothers and their families to live a life that's focused on overall wellness of mind, body, and spirit. When we build online communities for moms through platforms like Facebook, we give moms that space where they can cope with their stress and find others to tend and befriend. Okay, so first let's look at Zoom fitness classes. I would love for you guys to uh, use a chat box and if you are currently running any kind of a wellness class on Zoom, so fitness, nutrition, uh, mindset, whatever, type yes in the chat. And if you are not yet on Zoom, type not yet. All right, let's see. Amazing, so many people are already on Zoom, which is great. Oh, I see a couple not yet. So if you're not yet on Zoom, I encourage you to just get started. Um, sometimes a learning curve can be a little, you know, hard, but if I can do it, you can do it as well. Imperfect action is better than no action at all, right? You'll learn as you go. All right, so through Zoom, one of, an example of one of the classes I ran was called the Strong Body, Strong Mind Fitness Class for Moms. This is a one hour paid class. And to make sure there's elements of connection in this particular class, the first 15 minutes of class was spent on mindfulness activities. So we would do visualizations, meditations, or talk about current events if that's what they wanted to do. We would always do fun icebreaker games as well, such as two truths and a lie, uh, depending on the energy of the group that day. And if I if I sense and use my intuition that they need a little bit of pick me up, so then I would incorporate games right in with the fitness class. Sometimes I'd be like, you choose a number, you're gonna choose our burnout. Okay, now Sally made us do push-ups. it's Sally's fault, so everybody can laugh and really connect with each other um, through games right in the middle of class. Um, so it was awesome. Another way I was intentional about um, building community um, was to also have an ongoing Facebook group for participants that they can talk on their own during the week so they can build authentic connection with each other. So the whole idea with that was to build connection and have them um, recreate that sort of village that we can't have in person right now. Okay, so these simple elements in programming really do make a difference for how participants feel in your class. Um, your class can be the thing that keeps them going mentally, physically, emotionally during the week. So don't underestimate the power that you that you have and the gifts that you have as well. Okay, so another way that I am um, combating isolation and building a modern day village is through Facebook groups. So again, I wanna check out the chat box. If you currently have a community Facebook group, whether it's a free group or paid group, I'd love for you to type yes in the chat box. And if you currently don't, I want you to type, I need to get on that. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so many people have Facebook groups. Oh, I see a couple I need. Yes, you do need to get on that. <laughs> okay, so 
for me, I actually have three groups. Um, you don't need three groups, but I have three groups that serve different purposes in my life. The first group I had was uh, before I was a fit pro, it was a play date group. And that's how I got started in in hosting events and stuff like that. The second group I have is my global group. And that is uh, where I post all my branding and um, my wellness tips and all that sort of thing. And the third group is a group for moms with interstitial cystitis. And that's a support group because I also have interstitial cystitis. So it was my, it's my way to give back to, to that community since I've been in remission for forever. Um, so as I said, you don't need three groups. Just if you don't have one, just have one group. Um, and in my particular groups, I have uh, certain events such as the virtual connection night you can see here on the screen. And that was just a simple games night for moms where they can come and laugh. We, we had breakout rooms and all kinds of fun stuff. And we played like rock, paper, scissors and a lip reading and different kinds of things, right? Um, and the feedback from this was amazing. The ladies had so much fun and they're asking, when's the next one? When's the next one? Because they, they just wanted to do it again. Um, another way that you can engage your Facebook group is like you can have theme days, right? Like Mindset Monday, uh, Teaching Tuesday, Wellness Wednesday, Recipe Thursday, Fun Friday, things like this. So we'll look at the sheep scale now. That's the next uh, picture over. So this is an example of an engagement type post. Um, so let's see this in action now. So what, what sheep are you today? So type in the chat box and let me know what number sheep you are. Are you that sheep with the bucket over your head, the one with all of the, the hair? Which one are you? Okay, I see lots of different uh, kinds of sheep. I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm that like nine, that hyper sheep. <laughs> That's me jumping all over the place. Um, awesome, I see some other number nine hyper sheep <laughs> in the chat box, which is amazing. Okay, so these kind of posts can really open conversations for your face for the people in your Facebook group and trust me they really appreciate you taking the time to ask them, how are they, and to really engage with them. With all the division judgment and uncertainty in the world engagement type posts let your audience know that you genuinely care. It can also improve your members sense of connectedness to their community as a whole, which is amazing. So you might be saying, great, Allison, all this connection and this engagement. So how do I turn that into revenue, right? Well, when this is because, you know, people see your heart. They know that you're truly there for them. So many of the moms who have come out to my free events or are in my Facebook groups, they have been my clients for many years. Um, my first Facebook group, as I mentioned, it was just a simple play date group before I was a fit pro. I post my shoulder fit stuff in there as well. And people show up to both. They show up to paid events and they show up to free events as well. You know, of course, there's going to be people that just want to come out to the free events and that is okay as well. They're not the majority. Majority of the people attend, they attend both, which is, which is pretty cool. All right. So let's now shift into talking about uh, challenges that totally went to the wrong slide, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what happens with technology sometimes. Okay, and so another way I build a connection with uh, my community and combat uh, isolation is through paid challenges. All right, so I have a challenge coming up called the more than just a Kegel 28 day challenge and that starts February 1st. So you might be wondering how you can get a challenge started. So you can run an online challenge through a membership site such as ClickFunnels or Kajabi. You can also use your email marketing platform, your Facebook group, or through a, a challenge specific app such as OB. All right, so although the although my this particular challenge is gonna be run through a membership portal, again, I still uh, have a Facebook group because that's where the members will engage and can really connect with each other. They'll share their stories, share their journey, ask questions, get accountability and support. Um, and if you don't wanna utilize Facebook for that, I've seen other businesses uh, build connection by utilizing the chat feature and apps such as WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, or with a full on app-based challenge like OB, as I mentioned, which is pretty cool because that has a, actually a built-in chat feature in that particular app. So, I wanna get right into impact right now. I wanna say, I know that these tips that I've given are super simple, but I assure you they make a big difference in how people feel about themselves and their community as a whole. This is evident when I read reviews and receive private messages from the moms in my community. 
I won't read through all the impact statements because they're a little bit long, but um, I just wanted to highlight that we can impact so many more people online. There, are, there is no geographical boundary. We are no longer limited to just impacting our local community and that is so awesome. So through my online communities, moms like Shauna from Toronto, Simone from Vaughan, and Megan from Durham were all able to combat isolation and participate online from the comfort of their own homes. So amazing. Right now, I'm going to take the time to read Megan's um, impact statement. So I was happy to hear Allison was offering an online strong body, strong mind class. While it wasn't always easy to get motivated to work out first thing in the morning, especially after those sleepless nights with newborns, I left her class feeling great and ready for the day. Her energy is contagious. I really enjoyed the mindfulness activities and conversations we had at the beginning of class. With these tough times of not being able to work out in person, it was still nice. It was nice. I can't read. <laughs> it was nice to still have a feeling of community. So seeing impact statements like this really motivate me to continue the important work that I'm doing. I can build community, promote wellness, and get paid for doing so. I hope that you can also see that your unique skills, creativity, and services are needed online more than ever. You as a fit pro can really make a difference and help participants combat isolation during this hard time. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. That was wonderful. And we actually have some experience here at Camp at Pro doing um, virtual connection nights. So I know you mentioned a few of the things that you participate in, like the lip syncing. Um, our favorite one is a scavenger hunt. So you just have to be really strategic about where you place your laptop in your home, but you set a timer and then you have to run around the house to find a toothbrush or a pillow or um, really anything or everything. So it's also a fun fitness activity as well. So now I'll pass it over to Fiona, who is going to talk a little bit about how we can support our gym communities online. Take it away, Fiona. Hi, everybody. Welcome. But I need to ask, because we've all been fitness professionals, it's really hard to sit for this length of time, isn't it? So I would love everyone just to reach up as much as you can, even if you're not able to, and you adapt from a sitting position, that's great. Just, oh, just get in all those central systems and give them a reach and an extension. And then a big exhale. <sighs> I would love to hear in the comments how everyone is doing today. The very day. So with Hive Muskoka, I've been blessed enough to be running it since August. And at Hive, we like to help people find their worth. And what WORF is, is wellness, education, resilience, and fun. Part of that is by being responsible, being a social enterprise gym model, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but it's also about building revenue. Because we all know within this group, with the panelists and with everyone that is joining us, and you can see the passion in the chat coming out with everybody who's teaching and who's showing up for classes, either as a participant or as an instructor, um, that this is not a hobby for you. This is a job, this is a business. So bottom line is, is that I need to pay bills and I need to be responsible. And I need to provide a great platform for people to do well with their work. So part of our workshop today at Hive Muskoka is I want to let you know how mitigating risk is actually a phenomenal revenue builder. I'm going to talk to you, of course, uh, just as our other panelists, Tiffany and Allison did, about some of the ideas that I'm doing up at Hive to build and grow our community, both virtual and live, building those connections. Because I think one of the advantages of COVID is that it has opened up our planet. I'm hearing about laughing yoga in California. 
I'm hearing about amazing fun classes in Singapore. And I don't know if I would have necessarily been aware of those before COVID. Um, and as a gym owner, why wouldn't I be able to bring those instructors into my facility and have them teach for me live just in another country, right? So that's a revenue opportunity right there. We also have to make sure that we have a plan C, our COVID adaption to going online and retaining our members, retaining their support, retaining their encouragement and their resilience and supporting them when we can. So I love that Allison spoke about being, being the sheep and having the sheeps from one to nine. I thought that was great. And it references quite fun in a really great way with the slide that I have of the far side by Gary Larson, because I just feel sometimes, I don't know about any of you, you're welcome to comment in the box if you agree or don't, that people are just looking. They're looking for leadership. They're looking for motivation. They're looking for education and they're looking for connection. So truly right now, we all have that opportunity to be that border collie in the cartoon. And I think as Can't Fit Pro professionals, that opportunity is very much present with our certification standards, with our ability to grow and maintain some really great quality classes. So you can always shoot out into the comment if you feel like you're a border collie or perhaps another animal on the way to being a border collie. What do you think? <laughs> Just wanna make sure. All right. All right, so with risk mitigation, one of the interesting facts about Hive Muskoka is I've only been open during the pandemic. I was not pre-COVID other than building up my brand and building to open. Uh, we opened in August, so I've never known a business model that hasn't had a second wave, a third wave, a fourth wave, having what appears to be an insurmountable amount of masks under my um, uh, shelf in the office. But ultimately, I want people to feel safe and welcomed. That can be done very much online by making sure that you have all your quality paperwork. Do you have a waiver that's specific to online classes? We do. That makes people feel safe and welcomed. And again, during this latest closure where the day really changes day by day when we're being allowed to reopen, um, we already have our measures in place at Hive Muskoka for when we do reopen. Um, making sure, for example, uh, one of our success strategies is making sure that we have a variety of classes. Uh, when we opened, we had eight. Uh, right before our last closure in December, we had 37 classes. We are now up to 12. Next week, we are going to be up to 15 with the introduction of some instructors from the West and the East Coast who are going to be streaming live from where they are as part of Hive Muskoka. We also, I encourage you as a revenue builder to be the online presence that adheres and increases compliance that will provide you as being a revenue builder. So making sure that the rooms that people are working out in are safe and trip hazard free, all of those standards of CanFit Pro where we talk about running a safe, efficient, effectable, and an enjoyable class. If you wanna check out our guidelines, you can go to hivemuskoka.ca. One of the other ways that I have really utilized to increase revenue is by joining global networks and trainings, joining memberships like the Fitness Industry Council of Canada and being part of their Ontario Coalition Advisory Board, joining global networking scenarios 
such as Find Lawrence, who's Lawrence Viscontini. And of course, if anyone's been at CanFit Pro, you might know Lawrence Viscontini a little bit. Um, opportunities there to meet movers and shakers from around the world, uh, from Puerto Rico to California, to Long Island, to Betty in New Jersey. Each of these people every week provide me with ideas for revenue. They provide me with class strategies and also a little commiseration so we can utilize and build from each other's activities. One of the great things is also finding out how the rest of our planet is doing shutdowns. I've had some great resource strategies from the Philippines, from Hawaii, from California about asking, adjusting, being prepared to shift, updates to Zoom compliance, updates to Google. Here's a new way that you can teach and perform online and gain revenue for it. So definitely, um, is anybody, I'd love to hear in the comments if there is a networking community or networking group that you are relying on as a gym owner, as a fitness instructor, or as a personal trainer, please, I encourage you in the comments below. And with virtual community revenue building, currently at Hive Muskoka, with our online presence, we advocate for about 37 local and small businesses. I am a big believer that in this day and age, we are not in a competition mode, we are in a collaborative mode. One of the benefits of our global community is I can look in on Tiffany's scope class in Kelowna and learn some great ideas from it and stay in Ontario. And I can support her accordingly. I also love as a revenue builder doing free five minute short little videos one to three times a week on Facebook or Instagram. I do like to remain relevant, but I like to stay fed. So if anyone would like five more minutes of Fiona, and honestly, who can blame you, truly, um, you can come over to hivemuskoka.ca and you can join one of the classes. You can enjoy one of my Can't Fit Pro courses or webinars. And if you already know all that fun stuff and you're just waiting to do that theory exam and that practical exam, well, my goodness gracious, you can come on and get that done with me. Um, online with Canfor Pros and Education Academy has been amazing. It's been able to pivot me online as a community expert in health and wellness. Uh, media will come to me for articles and the return on investment of being able to write, be on the radio, add in a blog, add in a quote for somebody, somebody's finishing an article, I'll give them a statistic, I'll advocate for the fitness industry, and my goodness, the return on investment is usually between 20 and 45% of people that reach out and I get either online personal training from or they come out and join some of our classes. And again, it always goes back to being a border collie. We're here to lead. All animals seek connection, motivation, and education. We're here to support each other, which is why Hive Muskoka, as a great revenue builder, we're a social enterprise gym model. We can no longer rely on that lovely 2019 profit loss statement. It just doesn't work as much for us anymore. A social enterprise model leverages us for additional revenue from other businesses, from lunches and learns. I have reached out for district municipal long-term care facilities, the Rotary Club, I've gained experience. This has all been done online. This has not been done live. And the school board, because six hours a day can go by real slow if you've got kids that are a little agitated and flighty on their feet. So giving them a fitness opportunity is a skill set that we can offer. Our other things, of course, as our other lovely panelists have mentioned, um, making sure that you've got those challenges that Allison spoke about, 
having online prepackaged movement food programs for virtual for four to eight weeks. Any class that you provide, you can record and offer out for a financial contribution. I certainly don't like to say donation because we know in fitness, we are not a charity. Uh, fitness works, but not for free. So we wanna make sure that we value our time. We value the investment we put into our certification and our education standards. Uh, we also, one of the things that's worked really well for me for additional revenue and for exposure has been pairing with local realtors. So for every house that they sell, um, I'm offering out two personal training sessions with them. That's gone over very well. And that's someone else doing all the work for me, which I really appreciate, that delegation. Um, I also work with a local coffee company. We have a bean club um, specific to Hive Muskoka. I have another company that I work for called Urban Jars Muskoka that offer a discount. And I feature their products in uh, some of the courses that I teach and offer people an opportunity for that as well. As you can see in the slide, um, I lend out equipment. So when we were about to close, I let all our members know that any piece of equipment they would like was available for them to rent out. And within three days, I saw salt bikes going out the door. I saw water rowers scurrying their way into the back of pickup trucks. We literally unloaded and people had maybe two days where they didn't have the equipment they wanted. Uh, lent out ropes. Obviously we disinfected and that has been a surprising revenue builder. People feel valued, their movement feels welcome. And my bees, uh, I know we're just finishing up at 15 minutes, but I got a shout out to my bees. They are my cheerleaders. They are inviting me into their space, in their pajamas, in their kitchen, with kids running around behind them, with partners who don't realize you're doing a live class and they're working out. Uh, they open me into their space and they create such an intimacy for me and an opportunity to be in their lives in a very raw state. And I respect that very much. And I think that that respect and that opportunity for inclusion and acceptance also goes a long way as a revenue builder. People need to know that you care. So I listen. If they're not having a good day, I totally commiserate with them and recognize that showing up is sometimes the biggest battle of all. And I just adore my group. They are, they give me energy when I need energy. So in finishing up at 15 minutes and 20 seconds, I've got a variety of resources out on the right side um, with some definite options for revenue um, that they've been able to maintain yet. So thank you very much for your time. And I would love to know in the comments um, if there's any of the opportunities you may have from my workshop that you might be drawing in for your own. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all those tactical tips, Fiona. That was great. And thank you to Tiffany and Allison as well. Um, we do have a few minutes to do a little bit of Q&A. So I have a few questions that came in. Um, the first one here is from Jared and it's for Tiffany. I'd be interested in learning more about how the coffee chat was facilitated post-workout. Yes, thanks Jared. Um, how we did that was through the, if you're the host of your Zoom call, you can facilitate breakout rooms and put people into smaller groups of five or six. Mm -hmm. um, it was generally un unstructured and um, people just talked organically about a news of the day or issues that they were facing or challenges that they were facing. Um, or there was a lot of laughter. There was a lot of politics, <laughs> as you can imagine, through the summer and dealing with the upcoming US election. So a lot of those conversations uh, took place organically. Um, absolutely, you could structure it. So it's topic of the day um, if you wanted to get the ball rolling and, and get people talking more. But Generally, we um, we finished the class, give people a, a moment or two to, to hydrate, get settled, and quickly went into breakout groups and facilitated those those conversations. Perfect, thank you. Um, and this question is for 
all of our panelists today. I know you're all professionals on camera, but I'm sure there's been a few online bloopers along the way. So if anyone has a funny story to share so we aren't as intimidated to get started. Um, I was in a class, it was lovely impact jumping around in cardio and I bent down to do a squat my pants ripped open and I was wearing a thong. <laughs> Live. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. That's so uh, funny. Oh, I just want to interrupt uh, my, my, Zoom, or my Zumba class that was on Facebook Live and started dancing around and jumping all over me. <laughs> my puppy. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so she, she created some new Zumba choreography with me. <laughs> That's awesome. What about you, Allison? Any bloopers to share? Uh, yes. Um, my window's always open when I'm teaching because I teach out of this room. And my mom came and she was supposed to come and babysit and was late and was knocking on the window. So I had to be like, okay, everybody run in your place. And then I had to go run and open my door. It happens. <laughs> yep, it happens. There's a funny comment here. Um, someone taught an entire class on mute. Uh, so <laughs> I think... That's a good one as well. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Awesome. All right. So another question that came in is what's something that didn't work that you tried? Some technique that you thought was going to work online and it just maybe didn't work out too well. And then you tried something else instead. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing so far. <laughs> All the Facebook groups, like um, maybe to keep that engagement going, do you have a content calendar or how often are you posting those to keep up that engagement? Um, any tips to share there from learning? Um, well, for social media, um, of course, we know algorithms change every moment of every possible day. Um, but what I've learned, the best engagement that I get is usually Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays from 9 to 11 and from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. Huh. And, and probably about a 56% more of an engagement in terms of comments, shares, retweets, that kind of thing. What was that timeline again? Friday? Friday, Afternoon. about 9 to 11, and, or those three days, 9 to 11 or 1 to 3. And that could change next month because, of course, you know, with COVID, we have to constantly shift and, and adjust and adapt. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's what I've heard, and I've seen it. I found that people are watching stories more and more and not just by your posts, like your, your Facebook or your Instagram stories. Um, when yeah. those first came out, I was barely looking at them and I found a, finding now like I'm getting 75 yeah. people seeing my story. So I'll just do a quick, like, yeah. don't forget tomorrow's cardio and core class and a little reminder or some sort of meme that goes with it and just make it fun and engaging. Yeah. Same with Instagram with the reels, that 15 second little quick little teaser. It's just really hard for me to do 15 seconds. <laughs> for me i noticed that um, for me and my population the engagement is like six in the morning i post usually i post between five and six because my kids wake up at the crack of dawn so i do that and then usually moms are again are sometimes they're checking at noon and then they're checking like after the kids have gone to bed so if i make a post or a facebook live at 8 uh, 8 30 at night Usually mm -hmm. sometimes I fall asleep, but if I, if I pre-planned it and I posted it, then they get uh, a lot of engagement and reels are doing really, really well. And uh, for right now on Instagram, then Instagram is showing the reels more. Um, mm -hmm. So those get a lot of engagement and I, I, I've got a lot of feedback on, oh, I saw your reel, I saw your reel. So I know that reels on Instagram, they're pushing reels right now. But as you said, with mm -hmm. algorithm, next month, it might be something else. And mm -hmm. uh, as, as uh, Tiffany said, that uh, stories are also a, a good thing as well. That uh, yes. I, I noticed that people are checking stories instead of the actual uh, grid on, on yeah. Instagram, which is amazing. Yeah. And, I, and I did think of something as well that didn't work at all live. And, uh, and it was meal prepping. And I recorded it and the, I couldn't get the angles. And because I moved around in the kitchen so much, I could just, it was not, I'm just not going to be that virtual chef that I thought I was. <laughs> not, it was very stressful and the angles, it just, it didn't look the way I needed it to look and it didn't look fun and it didn't look engaging and it just, it wasn't successful. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, so I think my last question here is it's obvious that we need to get on Zoom as fitness professionals, but how do we convince um, some of our audience who may not be interested in Zoom or might not see the benefits or might be just hesitant to try the new technology, um, especially with seniors, how would you open that conversation and um, just let them know that Zoom is where it's at? Yeah, I could address that for sure. Um, and we know our aging population does have challenges often with tech. Um, so maybe that you could offer as you get started, a little techie time with them to help them go through the steps, be familiar with the steps yourself first, and then do a coaching session with them um, over the telephone or um, yeah, on a, on a face, FaceTime is what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's sometimes a progression. Um, I really struggled with Zoom when I first went on. Everyone else could figure out Zoom backgrounds and they were flipping them all the time. And I've yet to, it's, it was a struggle. I start a lot of my peeps on YouTube. They just click on YouTube. There's a channel, they go. And it's like, you know, Zoom is just as easy. You can preset a lot of the functions. You don't need a Zoom background. All you have to do is press launch meeting make it super easy uh take them through it like even do a slight recording of two minutes on how to get people up and running on zoom same with google meets as well and if they're still not available and excited about that i ask how they would want to communicate how they do want to do that is a pre-recorded video sent to them just as fun for them for zoom and maybe just not in real time exactly yeah Awesome. Well, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for attending our webinar today. Thank you to Tiffany, Allison, and Fiona for presenting. Uh, just a reminder that this is being recorded and it will be on our Canfit Pro YouTube page. And if you are interested in obtaining a CEC on this education, it will be available in your member portal tomorrow. Um, but thank you again. And I hope everyone learned some great tips on how as we as fitness professionals can impact our community online. Um, online isn't going away. So it's best to learn these tips and tricks now and be there for our community when they need it most. So thank you, everybody. Thank Have you, Nicole. Thank, thank you very much.